I'm Pete McCall. Welcome to episode 109 of All About Fitness. Before I get into the introduction for today's episode, I want to take a moment and explain what I try to do here in All About Fitness is I try to put together a series of interviews with experts from the same field or the same genre of fitness or exercise science. So what I started a couple weeks ago with Tammy Lee Webb, Tammy Lee was the kind of one of the first big video stars of fitness, of the modern fitness era. Well, we wouldn't have a video star from the older fitness era from the 1800s, but Tammy Lee was one of the first big you know video stars of fitness. And so what I wanted to do was a series of interviews with people who've really had an impact in that genre of fitness. But then Mother's Day was coming along and I had two good friends or have two good friends in the fitness industry who are doing amazing things, you know, as mothers. You know, one of them was uh, Shauna Verstegen. On episode 107, I talked with her about how after having birth, she went back to being a professional athlete. She's a professional lumberjack competitor in log rolling. And, and number one, I find that fascinating. I, I think that's really cool that she uh, is a world champion in log rolling. And, you know, the fact, too, is she's pregnant with her second kid. So anyway, for Mother's Day, I wanted to have an interview with Shauna to talk about kind of mother's fitness and then that that you know wove into Sarah Lynn Ward on episode 108. Um, Sarah Lynn is the author and the creator of the Mama Saugus blog. So I've had this interview in the can for a while, and I do want to apologize to Greg for that. It's just I was trying to figure out a not figure out, but I wanted to have a, a series of interviews to do at the same time. So after a brief hiatus to celebrate Mother's Day, and also folks, I've just been incredibly busy the last few weeks traveling. I've been back and forth across the U.S. Uh, speaking at different events. I even took a little trip to uh, to Russia, to to the Radna, to do uh, an, speak at an event in Moscow, uh, which is absolutely fascinating for me. It's, it's such a different environment. And as you've heard me speak on here, if you've listened to All About Fitness, you know that I'm in awe of the Russian sports scientists. A lot of what we do now it really emanates from the research they did years ago. That was really an honor for me. Now I'm back. This is actually, you know, I'm spending my first weekend at home in a number of number of times. So I'm trying to catch up on uh, some podcasts, get ahead with some recording and all that. Another thing that I have going on is I've recently been uh, contracted by a company, uh, Core Health and Fitness, to uh, be to do some international work, to work on the international side in their Asia, Pacific, and Latin America regions. So I will be getting uh, earning another 1K. <laughs> Looks like I'll be earning another 1K uh, status this year with uh, with United. That's all on the back end. That that to say that it's been uh, two weeks since I put out um the most re- mo- put out a podcast. Just give you a look uh, kind of behind the behind the curtain and see what's going on. But I really had, while I have been traveling and doing other things, I'm excited. I got a new sponsor lined up. Uh, we're going to be rolling that out here the next couple of weeks. I'm, it, it's a product company that I love. I've been using their products for years, and I'm really excited to have them come aboard. And just so you know, I would never um, want to advertise anything on this podcast, on this platform, that I didn't believe in 1,000% as a fitness product or as a, some kind of service or anything. That's you know Anything I would advertise is going to help you enhance your quality of life. Um, I'll put it there. Is that anything? If I once I start, if I do start advertising, I will not just. I do not want to take money from people unless I firmly believe in their product and can advocate for their product. Uh, those are a couple of things going on. So let's get back to episode one hundred and nine. This was really a, a fun conversation to have, and I'm, I'm wrapping up. You definitely want to listen to uh, to the, the end of this. You know, I always give my thoughts um, on the interview at the end of it. So you definitely need to listen to my the, my little a couple of thoughts at the end of this today. But this is a gentleman who I've gotten to know the last couple of years. We both are, are master trainers for core health and fitness. Uh, Greg Cook, um, and I'll say that again, Greg Cook has been a, a top fitness instructor in New York for going on two decades. He started out with Crunch. He works now with Equinox. He's a group fitness instructor in Equinox. Again, so we work. Uh, I work in the West Coast as an instructor for Equinox. We both work for Equinox. Uh, we both are, are master trainers for the same company, which is how we've got to know each other. And, and I'm very fortunate to be have the opportunity to work with leaders and with people doing wonderful things like Greg. But one of the things that Greg has been doing the last couple of years is he's transitioned. Well, he still teaches live classes, but he's now doing more live streaming workouts. Greg works with Daily Burn 365. And so he has been one of these people who is his, he's been involved. He hasn't been the one creating the tech by all means. 
but Greg has really transitioned to doing a lot of online workout classes. So I wanted to talk to him today. What we talk about today is what it's like to go from being in a live class where you have people, you have energy, and, and you're, 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 you're working directly with people to teaching a group fitness class staring in the unblinking eye of a camera. Because that is a transition. We, we talk about that. The other thing we talk about is how, as we get a little bit older, I mean, Greg, I'm in my mid-40s. Greg is knocking on the door of, of 50. We talk about how our tr- we've transitioned our thought process around training you know, purely for aesthetics. And Greg has worked in the toughest fitness, fitness market of Manhattan. And anybody who's ever been in Manhattan knows fitness is about appearance. But for the last few years, you know, once you get north of 40, you realize, whoa, fitness, I don't need to kill myself trying to, you know, keep this, you know, trying to be ripped anymore. I just want to use fitness to enhance my quality of life. So as is the theme on All About Fitness, that's one thing that Greg and I discussed today is how you can use fitness and things that you can be doing to support what you're doing in the gym to enhance your overall quality of life. After a brief word from the sponsor of All About Fitness, it's a lot of fun to sit down and have a conversation with Greg Cook, fitness instructor for Equinox and Daily Bird. What is part bench, part balance trainer, part stability ball, part jump box, and all results? The TerraCore by Vicor Fitness, specially designed to help enhance balance, strength, agility, and metabolic conditioning. The TerraCore is quickly becoming the go-to piece of workout equipment used by fitness professionals around the world. Whether you're training to earn that eight-figure contract or just trying to get in better shape, the TerraCore will help you achieve results you never thought possible. TerraCore by Vicor Fitness, the shape of things to come. Go to www.vicorefitness.com and use code AAF that's all about fitness, AAF, to save 20% on the purchase of a TerraCore. I'm Pete McCall with All About Fitness. I'm here today with a good buddy of mine, Greg Cook. Greg, can you give us a little information about what you do in the fitness industry? You bet. Um, first of all, thanks for thanks for doing this with me. I know we've been tr- trying to get together forever to do this. And um, let me tell you, I have been in the industry now for about 20 years. Uh, it all started at Crunch way, way back on a little mini trampoline. And uh, now now I'm working for Equinox. I've been working for them for about almost 20 years, um, mostly in group fitness, doing some education with them, mentoring indoor cycling instructors. They have a beautiful program, trying to create you know consistency across the board with their program. Um, I think the most fun I have besides that is teaching for Daily Burn, and that's an online fitness site that uh, streams live shows, Daily Burn 365, that's every day of the year, a different trainer, a different workout, and that's been kind of, um, that's been really exciting for me. Uh, and my wife and I are in the process of creating a business that um, sort of helps people put the pieces back together, people that are like my age and their 40s, um, 48 now, so anywhere, you know, 40 to 50, 60, 70, where they, they're just trying to figure out why it is that they're doing everything right, they're working out all the time, they think they're eating right, and things still aren't working out the way they thought they would. So we're, we're, we're addressing movement, sleep, stress management, community, and helping people put all the pieces back together there. Well, those are the reasons why I want to speak with you. We, we had a conversation a number of months ago about this, and I want to kind of break this down one at a time. So you've been teaching for, you've been teaching group fitness for 20 years. What have you seen change in the whole, and you're in New York. I mean, we're right now, uh, we're talking, we just got done with the Schwinn Master Trainer, the Core Health and Fitness, like Master Trainer meeting. How have you seen fitness tra- change in the last 20 years? And you've been in like one of the most competitive fitness environments in the world here in New York City. Yeah, that is a that's a that's a tough question to answer because so much has changed. I mean, back in the day, let's just start with indoor cycling. There was no measurement on bikes back then. There was no magnetic resistance on a wheel. Um, I was teaching a class, you know, on a mini trampoline, just getting people moving. It was very innocent. I feel like back then, and I think that, you know, um, along with current um, science and just exploration in general, you know, it's it's become a, a smarter a smarter business. Um, I've seen 
in Equinox, there's so much more emphasis on education right now, which is exciting because it's people aren't just going in there and just doing their bodybuilding routine. Um, some of them still are, but it's, yeah. you know, there's much more thought behind it. And I think people are starting to realize, and I am seeing on the good side that, you know, we're helping people move better and helping people realize that, you know, your body was built to move. Let's help you realize where your, your you know, where your movement patterns are off. Uh, why you have low back pain? Well, it's not because of your low back. Let's look at upstream, downstream. Let's figure out what's amiss in this. And I think that, uh, you know, there's just much more thought going into it. It's not just about six-pack abs and, um, you know, being skinny. Although, again, that is still out there. Well, do you think, and I agree, because, and this is one of the things we're talking about, you know, as we get a little bit more mature, you know, you mentioned you're, you're 48, I'm 45, and we both do this full time. Do you think that now, as we've gotten a little bit older, we realize the role that fitness plays in health? And do you think that, do you think that awareness is driving kind of a more open education or an open approach to fitness where now we're looking at fitness in terms of improving quality of life instead of just going for the six pack abs. Uh, for me, um, yeah, I've seen that across the board. And for me, that has become extremely important because for, you know, for years and I have the injuries to show, I was just all about high performance. Like I thought you could work yourself out to a perfect body. I thought that's all it was. If you just worked hard enough and long enough, you know, you'd have six pack abs, you'd have the perfect chest, biceps, blah, blah, blah. And um, there was a rude awakening one day, and it was a long time ago, but when I realized, oh, I, this fitness thing is not just about losing weight. You know, there's so many more aspects to it. And then one of the things that scares me the most is, you know, just the current health landscape in the US and the world, w worldwide really with, you know, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, you name it, people's joint dysfunction. People can't live without prescription drugs. Like that's to me really sad and scary. And I, I want to help people realize that, you know, even with fitness, like what we know, like in the gym, fitness, taking classes and being with a trainer, that's still like, if you, if you don't take a deeper dive, it's just getting your head above water. And I think that we can live and thrive at a much higher level if we dial in all the other aspects of health and well-being. And I want to come in because I know that's where you're, you're speaking. You said you're doing a business with, with your wife, and that's what you guys are getting into. Um, but first, I wanted to so you've been teaching live for years, and I know you've probably done some video work over the years just from having been in the industry. What's it like now being on Daily Burn? Because you are one of the, you, you know, you're kind of one of the founding fitness guys on Daily Burn, which has become one of the most, you know, I guess, popular live streaming workout apps. What's it like teaching in front of a camera instead of teaching in front of a group of live people in a, in a studio? <laughs> well, there's, there's a couple of things. We were just talking about this. One, when I first started, I was scared to death. I was super nervous because I hadn't been on camera in a while. And this is a whole new thing. It was going to be live every time. Um, once I got through like a few months and I, I work with Lisa Wheeler, you know her well, a good friend of both of ours, um, having her on the other side of the camera made it so easy, first of all. And it became like this fun and natural thing. And I knew that I was reaching so many people that needed this more than anything. Uh, people that were afraid to get up maybe or just um, couldn't afford to go into a gym, didn't want to go into a gym, uh, felt like they didn't belong in a gym. Now they can just get up and be a part of this huge community. That's the cool thing, because when you're teaching, in my mind anyway, there's thousands of people out there. And this is the beauty. I see them all like super into my class. So I can see you guys out there just like supercharged with a big smile, so enthusiastic and fully focused now, which is different from my normal class, because I do have individuals in my normal class that are all that. But then there's a whole other group that's just spaced out, trying to get on their phone, not paying attention, lost in thought. And that's really tough as an instructor. So it's been really refreshing because in my mind, I just imagine everyone just totally glued to their screen, hanging on every word. Well, and that's always, it's funny you say that because there's a woman that came into a class I taught the other day, a cycling class. She showed up 15 minutes late. She, you know, during the whole class, she kept paying attention to her phone. And I'm kind of like, well, why'd you even bother coming? I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're here, I guess. But, I, you know, in, how do you deal with that? I mean, what, it, how, well, first of all, for listeners, you know, how distracting is it when someone comes into class late? I mean, as an instructor, we take a lot of time to prepare, but how distracting is it? So, and this is for listeners, because I don't want to chastise you, but sometimes you might be better off skipping a class instead of showing up like five to 10 minutes late. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think it's 
most distracting for the other members that are taking class because it'll take our attention away from what's most important and that's us delivering a really good training session. So if you come in late and I have to focus on you for a second or you just draw my attention away from an important part of the class, you know, it, it just takes away from the quality and the energy of the class. I've gotten much better at just letting it go. And I think that's that's been my, probably the, the biggest struggle for me because I used to really, like it used to eat me up inside. Uh, just like, you know, when you're teaching a great class and you know how beneficial it's going to be for everyone, but there's a small group that's just not doing any of it. And you're like... It's like why? Why are you here? And, yeah. and it's like you know. Not, I don't want to go down that go down that rabbit hole, but it really is. If you're a group fitness person, trust me, we love having you in class, and everybody contributes to it. But sometimes, and I get it, you're stuck in traffic. You know, for whatever reason, it's out of your control. Your boss grabbed, grabbed you at the last minute. But I just, you know, to give the public service announcement, then we'll <laughs> move on. Just sometimes you're a little bit better off. You know what? Rather than showing up 10, 15 minutes late. You hit the treadmill, do something else, and plan on a workout another day. So is, how much energy does it take to be in front of a camera? I mean, to give the people the daily burn experience, and, and how does that play build a, a part of a community? Because that's one thing I spoke with Lisa about a while ago is, is a, the, the part that Daily Burn is doing to not only just give workouts, but to build a community around the workouts. Yeah, the community is probably the one of the biggest um, bonuses of and highlights of Daily Burn, I think, because um, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever gone on their Facebook page, but just the, the support and love for each other there is incredible. I mean, you and I grew up in the day when if we did a workout at home, it was, you know, VHS or maybe a DVD. <laughs> yeah. And it was always the same one over and over. And there was no one that you could communicate with. They always said the same thing because it was a recording. These are live. There's even a chat feed. So even before the workout, a little bit during the workout and after the workout, they're communicating with some of us. Um, not myself. I, you know, obviously I'm teaching, so I can't do <laughs> But my how phone. important is that community? I mean, because we were talking about this. This is one of your areas of concern is the people that are overweight, is the people that, that are obese or, or pre-diabetic. How important is that sense of community? Because my, my thing this year, Greg, one of my focuses is, is I want to kind of shift fitness away from like the outcome, like not to work out for, to lose 20 pounds, not to work out because you, you, you think you have to look a certain way, but to, to start to enjoy the process of working out. I want to get people, you know, I want to try to help you understand for the listeners. I want to help you understand that it's okay to go to the gym and just have fun working out and that you don't need to be working towards some sort of goal. You know, what role does community play in kind of helping that and kind of helping that us change that mindset? First of all, I love that. I think that um, getting in there and playing, in air quotes, is a brilliant idea. Like just getting in and moving and not feeling like, oh, I have to be in a squat rack squatting, which I love, don't get me wrong. But like for me, I'm sort of going down that same route. Like I want to get in there and play more. Um, the community, the importance of community is huge. And I'm, I'm starting to realize that more and more. Because I, I mean, I live in New York and I'm surrounded by people all the time and I just want to get away from people most of the time. But reconnecting, having a supportive group around you, especially if you're a little bit nervous about something or you're dealing with a problem that seems unusual. And then you realize, oh, there's like, you know, hundreds of other people that are dealing with the exact same thing as me. Even people that look totally different. Like one of my things that I love about Daily Burn is I'm able to be vulnerable and be like, hey, guys, I'm the farthest from perfect. You might see a certain person up there that's leading a class that looks like he's really got his, you know, can we swear on this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got his shit together. But, you know, there's so many areas of my life that need so much work. And I have the same problems everyone else does. I have doubts. I have, you know, uh, eating issues every now and then. I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. And that's one of the funny things that I get all the time. I go out to eat with people and they're like, oh, you eat that? I'm like, of course I do. I'm human. We're all human. So I think being able to share our full experience instead of our Facebook experience, and by that I mean, I feel like on, on social media these days, like there, you see a lot of the perfect side of people, you don't get to see always the depth of who they are. And with this a community at Daily Burn, I think we start to see each other's you know, weaknesses as well as strengths, and the biggest strength being the support that everyone gives. I mean, one person is down, everyone else flocks to them to like help lift them up again. And, and I think that's where we can really have an impact Great, because my, my concern is fitness is we do such a good job of making it look easy that people look at certain people like you or other 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 fitness instructors and go, 
I could never do a workout that he's teaching, you know, because I need to get fit. I actually had one or two clients, you know, when I was training full time, they came to me because they wanted to get in shape to be able to take group fitness classes. Yeah. You know, I mean, is that one of the reasons why, I mean, you're just talking about that. Isn't that one of the reasons why you like doing, working with the, the daily burn is you're really, you're impacting people because let's face it, there are a lot of people out there that might be scared of walking into a health club. Yeah. How important is it that they can feel comfortable working out in their home, but yet have that sense of being with others? Yeah, I think that's huge and helping them realize that they're not alone. If they're not alone. You know, we're here to support you, and a lot of us are in it to help you, the consumer, the person out there that is afraid to go into the gym, never been in a gym, feels like they need to get in shape in order to hire a trainer. That's always been one of those things that's baffled me, but I guess it makes sense because sadly we're a little embarrassed about ourselves, our, our weak sides, the sides that we haven't taken care of, and I'm here to say, like, don't be embarrassed. Like, we, people like myself and Pete, like, we're, we're in this business to lift everybody up, to help people, you know, help you all put it together in the best way possible to, you know, live the best life. And the best life is one where you have plenty of energy, you have good rest, you're strong, your, you know, your vitality is through the roof and your brain's functioning well. And, you know, we know a few things about helping you with that. And, and that's one of the things that, one of the reasons why I want to speak with you, this follows up from the conversation we had in Vegas at the IDEA conference. But I, that's where I think, too, the one thing you haven't really said, Greg, and I love, is you haven't really talked about appearance. You've been talking about the health parameters of fitness. You've been talking about, you know, the mental aspect, the movement aspect. We move better. You know, is that what you and your wife are getting into? Like, you know, what exactly are you going to be launching? And, and how's that gonna, how's that, how are you going to introduce and, and kind of bring something new to fitness? Um, yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a big question. And it's, for the longest time, you know, I've... I mean, I've worked out most of my life, like over 20 years. It's been almost 30 years now I've been in the gym working out, and most of it's been performance and physique driven, right? I want to look good, I want to feel good, but what I didn't realize in the earlier years is that if you beat the hell out of yourself, you could look amazing and feel horrible. And when you feel horrible, you don't, you're not a great person to be around. <laughs> and I want this world to be filled with people that are great to be around. And a big part of that is how you feel. So no matter how good you look, you're never gonna look good enough if you don't feel really good inside. And feeling good has to do more with deep health than it does, you know, being able to lift a lot of weight, being able to run a marathon. You know, we're doing our, coming back to your goals, I think our goal should be deeper in really self-care, taking good care of ourselves. So we're, I mean, we're, we're starting a website. Um, I'm actually working with a couple of people right now on a concept that could be a big um, center that helps, you know, bring all the pieces together more than just a fitness center. Um, with our business, the, the areas that we're looking at to help people, you know, to educate people around and, and give them some assistance in achieving is like movement, just generally movement. It could be, you know, anything from mobility work to uh, any, anything that is movement related. It's really broad screen, uh, global. Uh, movement, sleep is a huge one. And I've been lecturing my classes on sleep for so many years. And I was like, um, well, on that real quick, let me ask you this. How have your sleep habits changed? Like, what have you noticed by, in, A, how, how have your sleep habits changed? And what, noted, how, what effect has that had on your life? Well, my sleep habits have changed dramatically. And I've been working on it for years. I mean, now I sleep in a room that is pitch dark. I actually found blackout shades that Velcro to the frame of my window. So zero light gets through there. I have no lights in the room. The room's always, you know, in the 60s, low 60s to mid 60s. Um, quiet. Actually, I have like a little white noise machine in there. Um, I also, I, this, this is amazing to me. I actually am heading towards bed the second we get my daughter to bed. And she goes to bed around 8, 830. And I am starting to turn lights off. I have blue block glasses on. I turn my silly ass screens off, my blue light from my screens. I'm learning more and more and taking it more and more seriously now. Like I I'm trying to work towards a more natural circadian rhythm. So I'm actually in bed like 9, 9.30 at the latest these days. And I'm getting up around 4, 30, 5 o'clock, which is a little bit early. But um, I think that's been the biggest thing. Even on the weekends now, we're going to bed. There may be an occasion, like we're not super dogmatic about it, but every now and then we might go to bed 10, 11, 12, 1. But that's few and far between. So we're pretty much going to bed like we've always been told, right? If you go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, you're going to feel so much better. And I can tell you, it's made a huge difference. My recovery is so much better. 
Um, my mental, I've had some pretty serious, you know, mental fog at times. And, and that, that's clear enough. Like things are starting to fire quicker. Um, I just feel better walking down the street. I, I'm on my feet every day. You know, I got my little Apple watch checking my steps and it's always 10 to 18,000 steps a day which is a lot, you know, that's a lot of walking around and lifting and doing everything else that I do. And I, well, sorry to cut you off no, there, but how long, because this is one thing we hear about, and this is one area where I'm telling myself I'm trying to improve upon in 2018, and it sounds so rudimentary, right, Greg? It, it, you know, sleep. You know, we're sitting here, we're, we're fitness, we move, we, we were supposed, for years we've been preaching burn calories, go harder, right. and now what are we doing? We're, we're, we're like, on the complete 180 degree scale and saying, oh, man, guys, maybe you need to sleep more. Like overall, like how hard has it been for you to change your habits? And is it really something like for, on those one or two nights that you don't get your regular sleep? Is it something that you notice right away? It's definitely something I notice right away. Um, but luckily because I've created such a habit with it, like you recover pretty quickly. Like I get right back into it. I, and the reminder I get on that the morning after staying up too late is strong enough to go like, oh yes. I'm doing this for a reason. And it was tough. It's, it is really tough to change your habit. As simple as it may seem, I get it when people are like, uh, you know, I have clients. So I've been, a couple of them, like, come on, let's get to bed before 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock. You know, they're going to bed really late. They're sleeping long enough, but they're not getting the best quality sleep. You know, the longer you wait to go to bed, the less quality I think you're getting within your sleep. Um, it's taken me years to get here. It has taken me years. Um, it all started probably eight years ago or more when I first listened to one of Rob Wolf's podcasts. And I was like, at first I was like, this guy's crazy. What is he talking about? Leaky gut and lights out like that book lights. I think it was lights out. I was like, that's way too extreme. I can't, that can't be real. That's not, I don't, the, now eight years later, it's really sinking in. I'm going, oh wow, this stuff is for real. Like this is why we're so out of whack. And I think this stuff might be more important than, and I, I say this and you know, hesitantly, like maybe more important than the fitness thing. Honestly. You know, it, but that comes down to, you know, a lot of this is stress management. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I say this repeatedly. So for listeners, I apologize about that. But we have to look at what we do. I mean, our body is designed, we receive different types of stress and different types of stress affect us differently. And if we're doing a lot of exercise stress, yet we're not doing enough sleep to allow our body to recover from it. And we have work stress and life stress and commute stress laid on top of it then that, that's where things start to fall apart. Is that one of the things that, is that something to, that you think happens as we, that we become more of that as we age, Greg? Or is it something that we just, we're starting to understand it and study it more, so we're starting to get a better awareness of the effects of it overall? I think probably a little bit of both, depending, of course, on when you catch it, right? Because I think right now kids are dealing with so much more stress, and a lot of it is you know, technology driven. I don't think we realize the stress that, that that technology is putting on kids. You know, if they're given free range to be on phones, watch television, play games, you know, what that's doing to kids' brains and taking away from movement time, because the movement is key. Um, and I think I've, you've probably heard this too, like above the head, that, you know, our brain doesn't know whether it's work stress or training stress or you know, relationship stress, it all goes into the same system. Like your nervous system has to deal with it. And sometimes a workout is probably the worst thing you could do, especially a hardcore, go in, kill it, burn those calories and sweat your ass off. It's like, that's the last thing your body actually needs or your nervous system can deal with. So you think you're going and doing yourself a service, but you know, if you don't understand it and you're not dealing with the stress, cause I'm full right on there with you. Like, I think we need to talk about stress management more and more, like just realize that you know, if we're dwelling in the past or stressing out about the future and not just dealing, learning how to recognize that and unplug. Like, I've been preaching that now in my class. I'm like, guys, now the workout's over. Now it's time to downregulate. Don't run. Don't let your mind shift quickly into the next to-do th or thing on your to-do list. Like, take a moment. Let's reflect back on what you did. Let's settle in. Let's really create some closure here. Find a moment that's peaceful. Take a couple deep breaths and then move in into the next thing. Because if you just run from one thing to the next, your body feels like it's being you know, chased by a wild, crazy beast, and you're running for your life all the time. And then, I mean, you know better than I do, like the stress hormones that are released then, if you're in that state of go, 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 go all the time, to the point where you go to bed and then you lie in bed and you're like exhausted but wired at the same time, 
So your body doesn't know what the hell is going on. Well, because that's a good thing. Because I think people out there might might relate to that, where you know physically you feel exhausted, but yet you're laying in bed and you're staring at the ceiling, going, "Why can't I get to sleep?" And that is, you know, what Greg just referred to is cortisol, epinephrine, you know, stress hormones. Your body is is just constantly, you know, pumping that out. Now, one or two more questions, then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Meditation. Would you, have you, like, and again, this is kind of funny, dude, because I think both of you and I can relate to each other in the fact I would call myself, and I, I joke about this, I'm a recovering meathead. You know, you know, 20 years ago, it was all about how much I could bench press, how much yeah. I could squat, you know, how much weight I could put up. And, and now, you know, I joke about going to meetings on Mondays, you know, because Monday was International Chess Day. And, but now I'm starting to do things like be more aware about sleep, trying to meditate. You know, isn't it such a change? I mean, are you, have you started incorporating? I can't remember if we talked about this or not, but have you started incorporating that? Because it, it sounds like you would have. And what difference has meditation played in your overall fitness? Um... I have an interesting history in that I was a big mess when I was in my 20s, like depressed, really, really depressed, hated life. I was drinking too much, smoking too many cigarettes. Like I smoked a pack a day, did not, I didn't really have a very active, physically active life. It was just like go out, make some money so I could party. And it wreaked havoc on my mental state. And I luckily found meditation back then. It was at a place that I was doing construction, Kripalo up in um, the Berkshires. And there was a pamphlet about meditation, and I was like, God, like everything they say, all the benefits are everything that I need. And if it's free, because I don't have a lot of money, this is good. Let me try it. Yeah, <laughs> free is always good in your you know, 20s. <laughs> it's so great. And so I was like, all I got to do is sit here? All right, let me try it. And I remember the first time I tried it, it was like two or three minutes. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't do this. Um, so I've been doing it for a long time, on and off. There have been times where I've been deeply into it, you know, months where I let it go. And I've just grown to realize that when I let it go, things start to fall apart. Little areas of my life, like there's, you know, the that used to be nice and level, start to become unmanageable, more unmanageable. And um, I think for everything in my life, the meditation has been huge. And I, I encourage anyone that's listening to this, just explore it a little bit. It, think of it as mental training more than meditation. It doesn't have to be a spiritual practice. It's just practicing to manage your mind really is what it is and managing the stress really it is just recognizing that you are stressed and learning how to let go of it that's 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 a very i like that i've i've heard i asked that question of a lot of people and i've heard different responses about meditation and that's a very i like that response it's very basic very direct so what what things can we look forward to seeing from you soon i mean you got your equinox stuff you got these daily burn stuff you have, you know, the stuff that you're putting together. How can people follow, follow this information and find out kind of what you're up to? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Well, I am not very good on Twitter or Facebook, but um, on Facebook, it's Greg Cook. And on Twitter, Cook Greg. Um, my wife and I are, are starting a business. Check it out. We just launched our website. It's Deep Health Evolution. It um, doesn't have a whole lot on it yet. We have a newsletter. We're covering all things uh, sleep, stress management, fitness, movement related, um, also nutrition. I'm trying to get at it in broad strokes so everyone can, you know, so it's more palatable. So, you know, there's an entry level for everyone. Well, one thing on that, because we were talking about this again before the recording, and and you and I come from the generation where we got into fitness to help people. And we're talking about this specifically because we're in Manhattan right now. And now you're seeing people get into fitness because they want to become Insta famous, Instagram famous. So, I mean, I say that to make the point that people like you are putting out excellent content, yet because you're not you're doing it for the purpose of helping people first and not to try to promote yourself on social media, you know, I think there's this, you know, our generation, Greg, you know, you and I need to get better at this. We and do. how do we how do we communicate with that? Is that one thing that you've kind of noticed? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I've made many an attempt to get better at it and so far I'm failing pretty miserably, but uh, I know there's some people out there that are going to help me out. I'm hoping to do more of what you're doing with the podcast too, because I think this is a great way to reach a lot of people. Um, But yeah, I need to up my game around that. And I hope that people that get into it to be Insta famous realize that helping people is so much more fulfilling and will help you feel so much better about yourself when you get there. Because it's not about us. And we've been preaching that for years. Like I, I, you know, I do trainings for Schwinn and I always sound like if you want to become a good coach, do it for them. You don't need to ride the bike for you. Like, you know, so in those moments where the ride's fatiguing, you get off the bike and do a little teaching, give them every bit of yourself. Yeah, that's actually an important thing, and we'll close with this because 
I, I, for years, I would teach off the bike. And people, you know, part of the classes, I would teach off the bike, especially when I was teaching five, six, seven cycling classes yeah. a week. And people would look at me like, you're not riding. I'm like, no, I'm the coach in the class. You know, how important is it for people that do take group fitness? How important is it for realize that you're not competing against the instructor, that the instructor is there to coach you? You know, how important is it they recognize that your role, whether you're, you're on daily burn or whether you're live in person, your role is to coach. Isn't that, I mean, how important is that? Yeah, I think that's extremely important. And I think it's finally becoming a reality that people are starting to see that. Um, but it takes people like yourself and myself that have been doing it for a long time that can command a space authentically. And the people that take our classes know right from the start that you're there for them. And there'll be a few here and there, but I haven't had it in a long time. It's usually guys that would call me. I'll be like, hey, what's wrong with your bike? I'm like, my bike's fine. <laughs> Why? What's going on with my bike? Oh, I'm not on it. Okay. I can't give you, and I tell my classes every now and then, I'm like, guys, in order for me to give you the best class, I need to be able to focus on you. And if I'm on the bike, there's a certain amount of my focus going into me. So I believe in getting on and off the bike. But I'll get on for rhythmic parts that are easier parts. And then for the really intense part where I got to put a ton of focus on the class, that's when I get off the bike. And that's when I give everything I've got. And I only teach classes that I can coach. That, that's an important lesson. So with that, Greg, we'll wrap it up. Right. I know you got to get out of here. We got other things we got going on. So again, Greg, give us, give us your Twitter handle and that website one more time. All right. The uh, website is Deep Health Evolution. And my Twitter is Cook Greg. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you again. If you've never seen Greg in person, then some of that may not have a tremendous amount of relevance to you. Greg is in incredibly good shape. I mean, well, he's fit and it's hard. I say that and I'm going to kind of walk that back for a second because for years we take appearance as being the only sign of whether or not somebody is in good shape. You know, and on that front, you know, if that's all, if that's our only measure, or only metric for fitness, Greg is in incredibly good shape. He's very, you know, very muscular, very uh, well-defined, very low body fat. And it's interesting to have that conversation with him just about how his approach to fitness has changed over the years. So when we talk about that a little bit, you know, Greg has worked as a fitness model. He's done a lot of stuff with magazines like Men's Health and, and others so he's been in the limelight, you know, and, and that has been a priority. But it's interesting to hear how that has shifted. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to him is we've had this at a couple of our master trainer meetings or when we've worked at a couple of events together, we've kind of had these ongoing conversations. And it was a lot of fun to kind of sit down and, and be able to put that on on a recording. And that really is, you know, folks, for, you know, for those of you listening, that's what I'm wanting to do. That's what I'm trying to do with the podcast is – being somebody that, that works in a lot of education events, being somebody that has the opportunity to work with just some of the most brilliant and just really smartest people in our field, I wanted to try to just record some of those conversations so you can see what it is that a couple of fitness geeks like Greg and myself talk like talk about when we're together. And that's why that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to finally get together and have that conversation. I really appreciate his point of view. It's been interesting to see how he's evolved, especially being in Manhattan. I mean, I only go to Manhattan. Anytime I'm in New York, I'm there for two, maybe four days at the most. And I feel so overstimulated of just go, 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 especially in fitness. And for fitness instructors, that's one of the few places in the country where you can easily make a, a living, a full-time living, working as a fitness instructor. You can teach two or three classes before 9 a.m., you can teach two or three classes or midday, you know, around the lunchtime crowd, and you can easily teach two or three classes, you know, in the evening. And if you're getting paid anywhere from seventy to hundred dollars a class, as a lot of really good professional instructors are, you can see how you easily make, you know, a decent living doing that. And you know, it's not uh, you won't be able to retire early by any stretch of the imagination, but hey, you're, you're making a very good living wearing sweats. And I wanted to be able to kind of have a conversation with Greg about how what it's been like to make that transition from being a live instructor. Because as an instructor, you do feed off the audience. You know, Sarah Lynn and I talked about this in episode 108 about what it means to be an instructor. And, and the, you know, you take this, you take a responsibility to be prepared for each class that you teach, and you you take a responsibility of being involved in your students' lives. 
when I spoke with Greg, I wanted to get an idea of what is, what's it like to go from having a live audience who's with you, there with you, sweating with you, to being in a studio just looking at a camera. And it's interesting that within uh, you know a day or two after Greg and I spoke, I actually stopped by Daily Burn and you know part you know took part in a workout with uh, Cece and did a workout with her and you know, hung out with Lisa for a little bit and got to see kind of behind the scenes of how Daily Burn puts it together. And I really I really like what they're doing in the space. I mean, Lisa is somebody who just is absolutely brilliant. She's one of the really just you know leaders in our industry and has been for a number of years. And she's, she herself has transitioned from developing live classes and live workshops. And, and for years, she has been like a choreographer, producer for fitness videos. So this is a perfect marriage for, for her to be able to use her talents to now do online fitness like that. So I wanted to do, what I've been doing is doing this series of, we you know, spoke with Tammy Lee Webb, you know, one of the first big, you know, fitness video stars. I wanted to speak with Greg to talk about, you know, what it's like to be speaking, to doing the live streams. I think it's such a cool thing. My next guest is is one of the Instagram stars. She's really just come of age. Hannah Eden is her name. And she really has been very popular on Instagram. And she really has a good presence there. So I wanted to kind of, kind of have this like, just position or evolution. I guess evolution would be a better word from you know, VHS to streaming to social media. And I'm, I'm trying to nail down, I was trying to get a couple other people that, you know, a friend of mine, Jessica Smith, is doing some great stuff on YouTube, but we just couldn't make our schedules work out. I am going to try to get that interview, though. I'm also trying to get a, get a hold of one or two other Instagram um, fitness uh, fitness folks. And until I nail down those interviews or until I have them in the can, I don't, you know, don't want to kind of jinx myself by talking about it. So I'm, I want you to be able to see kind of what goes on and, and what takes place behind the scenes. You may follow Greg on Daily Burn 365 and not know that much about him, but he's really just a very thoughtful, caring, and, and intelligent guy. So I want to give you a look into that and see what makes him tick. And I'm trying to do the same with other people I speak with. You know, on that note, I, as I move forward here, I have talked about this a couple times before. I'm looking at expanding out into product reviews. I'm looking at doing a couple other things. I'm also looking at how do I, you know, how do I monetize this? I talked a little bit about at the beginning about ads, and and now, um, yeah, I am looking at that. I'm also looking at whether or not I do Patreon, uh, whether I just make that a you know donation thing. Because as you know, the good news is I'm getting busy. <laughs> the bad news is I'm getting busy, and I want to make the podcast and, and make, keep it a priority. Uh, because I, I really, number one, I really enjoy doing it. Number two, selfishly, I really enjoy the conversations I'm having. I mean, some of the people that I have lined up in the next coming weeks, I really, I'm really looking forward to those conversations. I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm doing some of the prep work, doing some of the background work now, and I can't wait to to have those interviews and really learn more. Because that's, you know, selfishly, folks, that's why I got into fitness education. You know, when you when you become an educator and you're in front of a room full of people. You have to stay on the game and study, and I really have found that I enjoy that. And I was not a good student in school and in undergrad, um, or in, in high school, or college by any means. You know, I did okay, but even once I got into fitness, I'm like, wow, this stuff is awesome. You know, why didn't I study this before? And I really it, it enjoyed the opportunity to do that. So that's what this this podcast is allowing me to do: is to talk with different people, get to know different people, and and learn different things. And I'm really enjoying that. And I'm enjoying uh, bringing that to you. So that's what I'm going to continue to try to do. If I do the Patreon thing, I'm playing with, do I want to have a membership? Um, if I do a membership, do I do some type of service like where I provide workouts? And then I'm like, okay, bandwidth. Do I have the time to really do that? Or what I think I might do is just do a Patreon. And if you like it, just kick in. You know, I, I, think, the ma- I think a magazine costs somewhere between 4 to $6. You know, if you pick up a, a shape, a self, whatever, and for somebody who spends a lot of time at airports, I probably spend more money than I need to on magazines. But you know, what I'm thinking about doing is just having a Patreon thing. If you're if you're enjoying the content, kick in whatever you would spend on a magazine, a fitness magazine for a month, four or five bucks. That's cool. You know, just if you do that, because what the only thing I really need to pay for, and I'm just being 100% transparent here, is I need to pay for the hosting service. I need to pay. I've, I've bought some microphones. I've been investing in some equipment, so I need need to pay for that. And just, you know, not really pay for my time, but just so I'm not losing money putting this together. I don't really care about making money per se, um, but I just want to make sure that uh, I can cover the costs and continue bringing you good quality stuff. 
On that note, right now, the only thing I ask is if you're enjoying this, if you're still listening, do me a favor, reach down or scroll down and just give us a good review if you're enjoying the content. Um, besides Hannah Eating coming up, I have some awesome interviews. I kind of I went a little bit, I'm getting a little bit outside of my box, so to speak, to try to get some other people in here that have some different, interesting, relevant um, evidence-based takes on fitness so you can understand how to use it to improve your quality of life. And right now, all I'm asking is that you just give a review. You know how it works, folks. The better the reviews, the easier it is, the higher up in the search engine it ranks. So if you could just reach down and give us a favorable review, let other people know that that All About Fitness is worth listening to. And I really appreciate it. I truly do. I appreciate your stopping by. If you want to connect with me, I, I post my blogs. I post some things that I write. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of writing for the American Council on Exercise. I write for 24 Hour Fitness. I do a lot of interviews. I post a lot of those up on Twitter. My Twitter handle is PeteMC. That's PeteMC underscore fitness. PeteMC underscore fitness on Twitter. My Instagram tag is Pete McCall underscore fitness. Pete McCall underscore fitness on Instagram. And uh, my friends in Russia <laughs> told me they'd like to see more stuff on, uh, you know, more stuff on, uh, on Instagram. And I'll see what I can do to, to help them out. And as always, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email, Pete at PeteMcCallFitness.com. Thanks a lot for stopping by All About Fitness. It means a lot to me. And I look forward to having you join us for future episodes. 